Hey again year three and welcome to the last week of half term. I hope you've still got a bit of energy left uh, for our last week. Um, well, I'm going to read the rest of Diary of a Killer Cat. So just go and get yourself somewhere nice and comfy and just give yourself um, a bit of a rest as we enjoy the rest of this story. Now, I realised last week that I hadn't quite got to the end of the chapter, which is terrible. Um, <laughs> so we're going to read the last couple of pages of the uh, last chapter and then we're going to read all the way to the end of the story. So we left the story last week where they were washing Thumper, the rabbit, from next door. They were dunking him in the water, waiting for the water um, to go all muddy. And then they kept cleaning him and cleaning him until the water what uh, finally ran clear so the water was all clear they'd got all the mud out of him then they plonked him on newspaper and gave ellie the hairdryer there you go they said fluff him up nicely well she got right into it i can tell you that ellie could grow up to be a real hotshot hairdresser the way she fluffed him up i have to say i never saw thumper look so nice before and he lived in next door's hutch for years and years and I saw him every day. I a thump. I sort of nodded at him as I strolled over the lawn to check out what was left in the feeding bowls further down the avenue. I tough. He'd sort of twitch back. Yes, we were good mates. We were pals. And so it was really nice to see him looking so spruced up and smart when Ellie had finished with him. He looked good. What now? said Ellie's father. Ellie's mum gave him a look, the sort of look she sometimes gives me, only nicer. Oh no, he said, not me. Oh no, 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 no. It's you or me, she said, and I can't go, can I? Why not, he said. You're smaller than I am. You can call through the hedge easier. That's when I realised what they had in mind. What could I say? What could I do to stop them? To explain? <laughs> Nothing. I'm just a cat. I sat and watched. Chapter 5. Friday. I call it Friday because they left it so late. The clock was already well past midnight by the time Ellie's father finally heaved himself out of his comfy chair in front of the telly and went upstairs. When he came down again, he was dressed in black black from head to foot. You look like a cat burglar, said Ellie's mother. I wish someone would burgle our cat, he muttered. I just ignored him. I thought that was best. Together they went to the back door. Don't switch the outside light on, he warned her. You never know who might be watching. <laughs> I tried to sneak out at the same time, but Ellie's mother held me back with her foot. You can just stay inside tonight, she told me. We've had enough from, we've had enough trouble from you this week. Fair's fair. And I heard all about it anyway later, from Bella and Tiger and Puskins. They all reported back. <laughs> They're good mates. They all saw Ellie's father creeping across the lawn with his plastic bag full of thumper, wrapped nicely in a towel to keep him clean. They all saw him forcing his way through the hole in the hedge and crawling across next door's lawn on his tummy. Couldn't think what he was doing, Puskin said afterwards. Ruin the hole in the hedge, complained Bella. He's made it so big that that Thompson's Rottweiler can get through it now. That father of Ellie's must have the most dreadful night vision, said Tiger. It took him, it took him forever to find that hutch in the dark. Anne prized the door open, and stuff in poor old Thumper, and set him out neatly on his bed of straw, all curled up, with the straw patted up round him, so it looked as if he was sleeping. It was very, very lifelike, said Bella. It could have fooled me. If anyone just happened to be passing in the dark, they'd really have thought that poor old Thumper had just died happily and peacefully in his sleep, after a good life, from old age. They all began howling with laughter. Shh, I said. Keep it down, guys. They'll hear. And I'm not supposed to be out tonight. I'm grounded. They all stared at me. Get away with you. Grounded? What for? Murder, I said. For cold-blooded bunicide. That set us all off again. 
We yowled and yowled. The last I heard before we got off in the last I heard before we took off in a gang up Beechcroft Drive was one of the bedroom windows being flung open and Ellie's father yelling, How did you get out, you crafty beast? So what's he gonna do? Nail up the cat flap. Chapter six Still Friday. He nailed up the cat flap. Would you believe this man? He comes down the stairs this morning and before he's even out of his pyjamas, he's set to work with a hammer and a nail. Bang, 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 bang. I'm giving him the stare. I really am. But then he turns around and speaks to me directly. There, he says, that'll fix you. Now it swings this way. He gives the cat flap a hefty shove with his foot, but it doesn't swing this way. And sure enough, when the flap tried to flap back in, it couldn't. It hit the nail. So, he says to me, you can go out, feel free to go out. Feel free, in fact, not only to go out, but also to stay out, get lost or disappear forever. But should you bother to come back again, don't go to the trouble of bringing anything with you, because this is now a one-way flap. And so you will have to sit on the doormat until one of the family lets you in. He narrows his eyes at me, all nasty like. And woe betide you, Tuffy, if there's anything dead lying waiting on the doormat beside you. Woe betide you? What a stupid expression. What on earth does it mean anyway? Woe betide you? <laughs> woe betide him. Chapter 7 Saturday. I hate Saturday morning. It's so unsettling. All that fussing and door banging and have you got the purse and where's the shopping list and do we need cat food? Of course we need cat food. What else am I supposed to eat all week? Eh? They were all pretty quiet today though. Ellie was sitting at the table carving Thumper a rather knife grey stone out of half a leftover cork floor tile. It said... Thumper, rest in peace. You mustn't take it round next door yet, her father warned her. Not till they've told us Thumper's dead, at any rate. Some people are born soft. Her eyes brimmed with tears. And there she is making the gravestone. Mm -hmm. There goes next door now. Ellie's mother said, looking out of the window. Which way is she headed? Towards the shops. Good. If we keep well behind, we can get Tuffy to the vets without bumping into her. Tuffy? Vets? Ellie was even more horrified than I was. She threw herself at her father, beating him with her soft little fists. Dad, no, you can't. I put up a far better fight with my claws. When he finally prized me out of the dark of the cupboard under the sink, his woolly was ruined and his hands were scratched and bleeding all over. He wasn't very pleased about it. Come out of there, you great fat furry psychopath. It's only a flu jab you're booked in for. More's the pity. Would you have believed him? What did Ellie and Tuffy think were going to happen? I wasn't absolutely sure. Neither was Ellie, so she tagged along. I was still quite suspicious when we reached the vets. That is the only reason why I spat at the girl behind the desk. There was no reason on earth to write handle with care at the top of my case notes. Even the tops, Thompson's Rottweiler doesn't have handle with care written on the top of his case notes. What's wrong with me? So I was a little rude in the waiting room. So what? I hate waiting. And I especially hate waiting stuffed in a wire cat cage. It's cramped, it's hot and it's boring. After a few hundred minutes of sitting there quietly, anyone would start teasing their neighbours. I didn't mean to frighten that little sick baby gerbil half to death. I was only looking at it. It's a free country, isn't it? Can't a cat even look at the sweet little baby gerbil? And... If I was licking my lips, of which I wasn't, that's only because I was thirsty. Honestly, I wasn't trying to pretend I was going to eat it. 
The trouble with baby gerbils is they can't take a joke. And neither can anyone else round here. Ellie's father looked up from the pamphlet he was reading called Your Pet and Worms. Oh, nice. Very nice. Turn the cage round the other way, Ellie, he said. <clears throat> Ellie turned my cage round the other way. Now I was looking at the fish's terrier. And if there's any animal in the world who ought to have handle with care, written at the top of his case notes, it's the fish's terrier. OK, so I hissed at him. It was only a little hiss. You practically had to have bionic ears to hear it. And I did growl a bit. But you'd think he'd have a head start on growling. He's a dog after all. I'm only a cat. And yes, OK, I spat a bit. But only a bit. Nothing you'd even notice unless you were waking to pi waiting to pick on someone. Well, how was I to know he wasn't feeling very well? Not everyone waiting for the vet is ill. I wasn't ill, was I? Actually, I've never been ill in my life. I don't even know what it feels like. But I reckon, even if I were dying, something furry locked in a cage could make an eensy weensy noise at me without my ending up whimpering and cowering and scrabbling to get under the seat to hide behind the knees of my owner. More a chicken than a Scotch terrier, if you want my opinion. Could you please keep that vile cat of yours under control? Mrs Fisher said nastily. Ellie stuck up for me. He is in a cage. <laughs> He's still scaring half the animals in here to death. Can't you cover him up or something? Ellie was going to keep arguing, I could tell. But without even looking up from his worm pamphlet, her father just dropped his raincoat over my cage as if I was some mangy old parrot or something. And everything went black. No wonder by the time the vet came at me with her la nasty long needle, I was in a bit of a mood. I didn't mean to scratch her that badly, though. Or smash all those little glass bottles. Or tip the expensive new cat scales off the bench. Or spill all that cleaning fluid. It wasn't me who ripped my record card into tiny pieces, though. That was the vet. When we left, Ellie was in tears again. She hugged my cage tightly to her chest. Oh, Tuffy, until we find a new vet who'll promise to look after you, you must be so careful not to get run over. Fat chance. Her father muttered. I was just glowering at him through the cage wire when he spotted Ellie's mother standing knee deep in shopping bags outside the supermarket. You're very late, she scolded. Was there a bit of trouble at the vets? Ellie burst into tears. I mean, talk about wimp. But her father is made of sterner stuff. He'd just taken the most huge breath ready to snitch on me when suddenly he let it out again, out of the corner of his eye. He spotted trouble of another sort. Quick, he whispered. Next door is just coming through the checkout. He picked up half the shopping bags. Ellie's mother picked up the rest. But before we could get away, next door had come through the glass doors. So now all four of them were forced to chat. Morning, said Ellie's father. Morning, said next door. Nice day, said Ellie's father. Lovely, agreed next door. Nicer than yesterday, said Ellie's mother. Oh, yes, next door said. Yesterday was horrible. She probably just meant the weather, for heaven's sake. But Ellie's eyes filled with tears. I don't know why she was so fond of Thumper. I'm the only one who's supposed to be her pet, not him. And because she couldn't see where she was going properly anymore, she bumped into her mother and half the tins of cat food fell out of one of the shopping bags and rolled off down the street. Ellie dumped down my cage and chased off after them. Then she made the mistake of reading the labels. Oh no, she wailed. Rabbit chunks. Really, that child is such a drip. She'd never make it in our gang. She wouldn't last a week. Talking about rabbit, said next door. The most extraordinary thing happened at our house. Really? said Ellie's father, glaring at me. Oh, yes, said Ellie's mother, glaring at me as well. Yes, said next door. 
On Monday, poor Thumper looked a bit poorly, so we brought him inside. And on Tuesday, he was, he was worse. And on Wednesday, he died. He was terribly old and he'd had a happy life, so we didn't feel too bad about it. In fact, we had a little funeral and buried him in a box at the bottom of the garden. I'm staring up at the clouds now. And on Thursday, he'd gone. Gone? Gone? Yes, gone. And all there was left of him was a hole in the ground and an empty box. Really? Good heavens! Ellie's father was giving me the most suspicious look. And then, yesterday, next door went on, something even more extraordinary happened. Thumper was back again, all fluffed up nicely and back in his hutch. Back in his hutch, you say? Or fluffed up nicely? How strange! You have to hand it to them. They're good actors. They kept it up all the way home. What an amazing story. How on earth could it have happened? Quite astonishing. So strange. Till we were safely through the front door. And then, of course, the pair of them turned on me. Deceitful creature, making us think you killed him. Just pretending all along. I knew that cat could never have done it. That rabbit was even fatter than he was. You'd have thought they all wanted me to have murdered old Thumper. All except Ellie. She was sweet. Don't you dare pick on Tuffy, she told them. You leave him alone. I bet he didn't even dig poor Thumper up. I bet it was the fish's nasty, vicious terrier who did that. All Tuffy did was bring Thumper back to us so we could make sure he was buried again properly. He's a hero, a kind and thoughtful hero. She gave me a big, soft squeeze. Isn't that right, Tuffy? I'm saying nothing, am I? I'm a cat. So I just sat and watched while they unnailed the cat flap. And that's the end of the story. I hope that you enjoyed that one. Uh, I certainly did. Um, we will choose something uh, again for a different story for after half term. Um, I think maybe we'll read a Roald Dahl story. So if you have got any ideas of which are your favourite Roald Dahl stories, then please let me know um, and we'll start another one for after half term. OK, well, I hope you have a lovely half term rest. Make sure you have a good break. Uh, don't think about maths and English. Just leave those for um, when we come back after the half term. OK, and we'll see you soon. Take care, everyone. Bye.